and welcome back now today we're talking about microwave movement detectors what are they well physically they look like something like this which is basically a microwave transmitter and receiver all packaged in one and it works by detecting the received microwave in the same way as perhaps a, a PIR might but this time it relies on the Doppler effect to get the information about a movement so if you can imagine this was um, if this was built into the front of a, a speed gun say a police speed gun that is um, the microwaves will be transmitted from here received on the other side and the signal can then be processed and from that you can work out what the speed of the vehicle approaching is how does it do that well basically just like it is with um, a fire engine that goes past you and you hear the sound dip and then rise again and that's not just some kind of illusion that really does happen the sound as heard by you does change or so the same thing happens here on this little microwave unit so as a vehicle or indeed a person approaches this flat surface the uh, microwaves that are bouncing from that person back onto here are going to change in frequency and that's exactly what this is this is a frequency measurer i suppose you could call it this is the hb100 and there's there's quite a few on sale uh, now it's not that simple to set up because as you can see on the workbench behind me this bit of electronics you do need this frequency well signal amplifier it's not a frequency amplifier it's a signal amplifier otherwise your Arduino could not detect it now that's not difficult to build I mean it's a little bit fiddly you know I'd rather not have built it at all to be quite honest but um, I wanted to just see how well this worked and the answer is um, not very to be quite honest I'm sure that in its proper environment for what it was intended for I'm sure they work brilliantly that probably is a radar gun actually for the police speed detection or something like that but as it stands I'm having well very variable results I mean so so poor in fact I could never build this into a project what do I mean well let's just whip over to the code window for a second or two just so that we can see what's running there right so this is the little sketch I didn't make this sketch up this basically relies on a a library so let's just uh, have a look at what that is at the top oh here it is so this is the library analog frequency and I know some clever person or people have managed to take the output from this little amplifier into the Arduino and detect what the frequency coming in is and from the results screen here the debug window you can see that disappointingly it seems to think there's a 15 hertz signal or 14 hertz signal coming in now just before I, I started this video I just got it to the point where it's actually reliably detecting stuff even though in the code as you can see here I've had to filter stuff out by basically saying if the amplitude of the signal is too low and we have or no and we haven't had enough samples and or let's get this right all the frequency is greater than 45 hertz don't show it and this frequency bit greater than 45 hertz is there because it seemed to be detecting mains frequency from somewhere now I'm assuming that since I've turned on my video equipment and my light my camera and all that it's somehow picking up this sort of 14 hertz signal now if I do move my hand in front of it you can see it does change so I'm just sort of waving my hand around you know going backwards and forwards and you can see that yes it does change and therefore it is detecting me and therefore you could filter out this sort of 14 hertz but it wasn't there five minutes ago and now it is so that's what I mean about reliability and the fact we have to do this sort of thing here th this is what we'd call a code smell basically we're doing something in code that just should not be required and it's a hack isn't it I shouldn't have to do this if this is if this was working as designed or at least as we want it to work then I wouldn't have to do any of that it would just come up with zero Hertz when nothing's moving and as soon as I wave my hand in front of it it should come up with the correct value 
Now, the reason why I, in fact, even bought this just to experiment with, um, and I didn't know at the time I was going to have to build this board as well, was because the vendor, and in fact, the internet generally, said, hey, this sees through doors and walls and stuff like that, which once again is a double-edged sword, but we'll come on to that. So if I was to put something in front of this, like a, a board or a book or something, so let's just put a book in front of it just for now. So you'll have to bear with me because I'm just going to pretend this is some kind of obstacle. So I'm just going to put my pucker pad like that in front of it. And then I'm going to wave my hand about here like this. OK, so we'll go back to the code window and we'll see what happens. So you can see at the moment it's at that sort of 14. Let me just get the curve this out of the way. Right, it's at the 14 resting mark. But if I move my hand, look, you can see it does change significantly and uh, in my experiments it really does detect through not just a paper pad like this i've had um, chipboard and stuff like that in front of me and yes it does detect through that so it can detect through doors and in fact thin walls i mean i wouldn't think it would go through a, a brick wall to be quite honest i haven't tested that but you never know so what what is act, actually bad about this apart from the fact i can't get it running well let's just think about this for a minute if this is actually uh, going to be built into a, I don't know, a device that detects intruders perhaps then do you actually want it going through walls now if you've watched um, i think it's the matrix yeah it is the matrix right at the beginning when he um he attaches something to his door so he can see who's the other side of the door, or at least detect that somebody the other side of the door. You can do that with this. But then again, if you're going to put this around your property, I guess you could put this by your front door and then detect that somebody's approaching it from the other side rather than a PIR detector. But then again, you know, is it is it the best solution? I'm suspecting not myself. Anyway, just just for completion, really, I tested this one out, the HB100, um, built this little amplifier, and I'm not convinced it's what we need. Obviously, these, these units have been manufactured in China by the hundreds of thousands, presumably for some, somebody to fit into a piece of equipment. And now they've got loads left over, so they're flogging them off cheap and saying they're suitable for Arduino and pies and all the rest of it. And I would raise an eyebrow to that claim. However, let's let's just see where I got this from. So here we are, HB100 sensor module. Now it's not cheap, is it? Four pound thirty. I don't remember thinking about this. I've had this for a little while. I must admit, probably since um, October, November 2016, before I played about with it. So. Four pound thirty, hmm. And then you got a factory in this board, which okay, it wasn't wasn't expensive. The little chip on here is um, a a dual quad amp with a few resistors and uh, capacitors on it. It's not not major, but still four pound thirty. But there's something that doesn't actually do what we want. Now, just before I get loads of people saying there's a sold out sign on here, so you can't buy it anyway. Well, loads of people are selling this. Okay, so if you wanted one to experiment with, you could. But what we really want in the Arduino world is just something that doesn't give us frequency that we then have to muck about with. We'd like a sort of a, a microwave transmitter receiver detector unit that could just, well, act like a switch really, a bit like a PIR unit. You know, is there somebody there or is there not? And have a variable sensitivity. If only there was something like that, I think we'd be um, quids in. Something like this one, actually. So let me get this one set up and moved into center stage. And we'll talk about why this one seemed to work a whole lot better. So the lesson we learned today, Benny, was that I mustn't try to measure movement detection when you're walking about the office, see? Yeah. He's off. Right, so here I've got this one set up now. This is, um, <laughs> just rolls off the tongue, this name, XYC-WB-DC. Fine, okay, whatever they want to call it, that's fine by me. But this one 
is a bit more like we just spoke about. It's a microwave detector and you can tell that from the fact it's got this funny trace on here like this, which will bring nice and close. You can see now that is actually a particular length and is probably an eighth or a quarter wave, whatever this microwave frequency is. I think it's a 5.8. We'll have a look at that. Yes, it is a 5.8. I've just sneaked a peek there. Um, now this one though has already got a backing board on it. As you can see, this front unit, the raw microwave transmitter receiver, I guess, is, is already soldered onto this backing board. And it's got three wires on the back and it's just literally, whoops, it's literally plus, minus and out. So let's just see how well this works. And then we'll talk a little bit more about this because I think this is something that Arduino users could potentially use. So I'm just going to jam that into a bit of blue tack down there. Right, and now we'll go over to the, the code window. Right, so there, this is a different sketch now. This is the 5.8 XYC WBDC sketch, and it's, it's simplicity it itself. Um, it, well, it's no different to detecting a switch, really. It just says, is it high, is it low? Waiting for movement. So it says at the moment, look, waiting for movement. I move my hand in front of it, movement's detected, and then it goes back to waiting for more movement. And well, there is no distance to measure. It just says I can detect movement or not. Once again, let's do the um, the pucker book test. So I'm going to put this in front of it, move this up here so that I'm the other side of it. So I'm here now. So if I just, well, I'll put my hand here. Look, I'm keeping very, very still. It's waiting for some sort of movement. I open my hand. And as you can see, it detects me no trouble at all. Now, in fact, when I first got it, it was detecting a whole lot more than that. And we'll talk about that in just a sec. But what's the downside of this one? Well, first of all, let's have a look where I got it from. So this is an eBay purchase. You can find these all over the place as well, actually. So, you know, don't you don't have to go to this particular seller. It just happens to be module me. But £1.30, which is probably about, what, $1.60 maybe these days, it's cheap. And because it comes with that sort of backing uh, daughter board already soldered on and everything, and all you get is three wires, this is in fact quite a nice little unit, I think. Yes, it sees through doors and walls. Um, it's a simple on-off switch. What's the downside? Okay, I knew you were going to ask me that. So if we go to the only documentation that is available for this unit, and this also is all over the internet, but nobody's posted anything else. So that's it. So as you can see, the um, what it's saying here, of course, is that uh, you don't really expect me to read Chinese, do you? No, I didn't think so. However, in the interests of the Arduino world, if we flip to my monitor, oh, look. Here's a, here's a version that I've got um, with the translations on it. And so I painstakingly looked up each of these characters and trans... No, I didn't. I went to Google Translate. All right, on my phone, I took a picture. Google Translate kindly gave me a semblance of English, which I sort of paraphrased here, but that's exactly what it is. So what it's actually telling us is that you can, although there are resistors either present or absent on here, you can adjust the sensitivity and the delay, and you will need to do that. Because if you look at this one here, the delay time, by default, it stays high for 30 seconds, which is far too long for us. We just want a, a quick switch, don't we? Well, the minimum you can get, I think, is about a second. In fact, if we go to the code window, is that a second? Yeah, it's about right, isn't it? From when it's detected to when it says I'm waiting. Yeah, that's about a second. So that's good. Um, what? Oh, wrong one. Just a minute. I'll, I'll go back to the point. <laughs> Let me just get myself sorted. There we are. Right. Um, so this this top one now here, uh, which it says between 10 and 100K, that's the sensitivity. Now, what I had to do... Oh, first of all, it says the default here is 20K. Wrong on my one, it was 12K, so it's far too sensitive. I mean, you just couldn't breathe without it going off. Now, of course, that might be all right if you've got this on a wall somewhere and it's surrounding your premises, but be careful because going through walls, you can pick up all sorts of things. You know, you can pick up a, a cat the other side of a fence. 
you can pick up people in the house rather than outside of the house. So it is a little bit of a double-edged sword if you start making it too sensitive. But what I've done on my version is to desolder this resistor. It's only a surface mount resistor. So when you desolder that, you're left with two holes basically. And I soldered on a variable 100K resistor. And I found, I think it was, um, so it's this thing here, look, so I've soldered couple of pins on there which were almost the right size to do it that way you couldn't couldn't slot them in but it's almost about the right size there and it just goes on to this breadboard with 100k and as you can see it's it's pretty low it's probably about 20k something like that uh, yeah, roughly 12 was too much so 20k if I had put a 20k in to begin with maybe it would have been all right but as I say I had a 20 uh, a, a 12 which was far too low so back to the um monitor uh oh yes and it tells you the um connections although they are printed on in very tiny letters right next to this this white connector here you can see them now this one i haven't quite cracked it says this soldering hole is the location of the photo resist solder joint now is that an invitation for us to fit a photo resistor an ldr light dependent resistor or what I don't know and nobody else has mentioned it on the internet either so I've just left it as it is I'm guessing if you really wanted this only to operate during the hours of darkness you'd probably do something into the Arduino rather than try and faff about with this board okay now um, so apart from removing this resistor and putting in a um, what did I put in a 1k to get it down from the 30 seconds to one second and changing this resistor here then to the variable one but I suspect 20k is about right uh, what else did I have to do absolutely nothing it works as intended so I'm I'm more than happy with the way this works um, you could easily I mean look at the, the sketch here is is well nothing really is it it's just like um well detecting a switch you know is it is it closed or not um, you could easily use this as a replacement for PIR and I suppose you could then mount it well in a closed box really to make it weatherproof uh, as long as you pointed it away from everything so that bit with the aerial on this this funny squiggly line if that was the bit that you're pointing out of your property um, I guess that would work okay in a sealed box so your I don't know about you but all my PR detectors eventually fail due to the ultraviolet light um, making the, the whole PIR thing very brittle and they fall apart and it, you know the rain gets on it so sooner or later they all fall to bits I mean it might take two or three years but fall to bits they do now this one of course you could build into a, a nice little box and the rain would never get to it so it would last potentially forever um, what else can I tell you about this let's go back to the browser window okay so that's that funny little diagram that I've translated I'll put that up by the way um, no that was it really so there we are one pound 30 find them all over the place and with those two little tiny modifications and they are easy to do just get a very very fine soldering iron bit to take those um, resistors the surface mount resistors off off the board and you'll be fine don't try and do it with the big quarter inch chisel soldering iron that, that just won't get you anywhere okay there's some nice pictures on here as well what it looks like so um you know you can have a look see what they like in fact one of them does give a yeah that's that's a pretty good one for the uh resistors actually r9 in fact it's even marked look r6 and r9 so it's very easy to do so that's that's pretty much what i would say this one works well for what we want it has a variable resistance for um, range and a variable resistance for delay although normally the delay would probably be done on the Arduino itself but certainly the variable range would be useful to have a variable potentiometer I think fitted on here in much the same as I've got here but you know a proper pot with a knob on it um, and for £1.30 well I think that's probably good value for money certainly a lot better value for money than the HB100 which I've yet to get working reliably and for £4.30 it's just too much really but then again you've got to remember that this actually does give out the frequency and distance and speed of course the, the speed of something approaching so you know it's um, oh, 
so it shouldn't be discounted just because of the price it's giving you more just that with my limited time I haven't got it working adequately reliably so I'm going to stick with this one that's quite a nice one £1.30 about $1.60 thereabouts and you can find them everywhere right that's all for the microwave um, sensor and the the sketches the translated picture that I've got and all that will be in the comment section uh, under this video or in fact more likely we're probably on the github repository a link to which will be in the comment section below this video so that's it then thanks very much indeed for watching and i do like all your contributions to the videos and the questions and so forth so thanks very much for doing all that thanks for watching this video see you in the next one i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching